everyone, it's Corleone from Lightcast Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Adobe After Effects CS4. Now, Adobe After Effects is one of those kind of programs that, you know, is a little complicated at times, but once you get the basics down, you kind of understand how everything works. Uh, Adobe After Effects is created by, obviously, Adobe, and it's usually released in things like Creative Suite and or you can buy them separately. I do have um, CS5 for everything else, but unfortunately, my computer is not fast enough for Adobe After Effects CS5, so I'm going to be using Adobe After Effects CS4 to be teaching you guys the basics of After Effects. Now, all the uh, different programs kind of work the same anyways, so you can apply this to CS5 if you so choose. Uh, let's talk about what the interface is and basically what is going on with the actual uh, program. First off, let's talk about the workspace. Now, the workflow of After Effects usually works according to like um, what, what the layers are, uh, whatever you put and you know it's it's a very it's kind of it's a very fast paced and a very slow paced kind of program um, fast paced in the matter that um, if you don't understand how to do something then you're kind of like screwed but um, it's slow paced in the fact that you have to edit details according to um, how you want and you can kind of like adjust your different uh, workflow depending on however you, whatever you're working on and however you work you know, let's say you're working on like a very long film and you need to set it, um, split it up into different scenes. Um, After Effects is there with different compositions um, and things like that. So that's really helpful. Let's talk about the workspace of After Effects. Now, when you first start up After Effects for the first time, um, it's usually set to what is called the standard workspace. And basically that's set up with the project bin, the timeline, the composition window, info and audio panels, as well as the preview effects and presets um, panels. If you're working with text, you can add different things such as uh, the character uh, panel, which allows you to edit the text. So if in, or in order to add different panels to your workspace, you need to go to Window, and you need to find the actual panel. So we're going to either click Control 6 to as a shortcut to the character panel, or we can just click it, and we'll add it right here. You can also move things in the workspace wherever you'd like. So we want to move, if we want it to move to the uh, preview panel, we can move it there, and we can you know move everything around. And basically everything adjusts according to according to however you want. And you can also make your own workspace by, let's say we want to save this as our own new workspace. We can click new workspace and, you know, make that the new workspace. We can also change different workspaces that are already preset depending on whatever we're working on. Let's say we're making an animation. We can click, we can click the animation um, workspace and the effects and presets will be uh, where we're going to be using. And most everything stays the same. And if we want to go back to standard, we simply go to workspace, standard. And if we changed anything on accident, we can go to work workspace, reset standard. And it'll ask you if you want to discard changes and click yes. Now we're going to talk about the project bin. Now the project bin is basically where everything you use on After Effects uh, comes to play. It's where you store everything. You keep folders, files, um, objects, and basically all the different layers that you can be using in your composition. And you can also use it as a reference to uh, your actual project and whatever you're working on. The folders are good for organizing and you can use these tags to organize uh, different things by color. So let's say you wanted uh, the folders to be uh, the same, like they you wanted to make sure that they, um, w w you want to know which one works with which because you know After Effects does get a little complicated in times when you have a lot of files on your computer and or um, composition and you really don't know where everything is. You can color code things and or put them into folders to separate them and things like that. You can also make a new composition by simply, let's delete this one real quick. Uh, you have to click delete key um, on your uh, keyboard or you can drag it into the trash bin and you can do it that way. Now we can make a new composition, let's say we have a file that is a like TIFF sequence for example which was imported from Cinema 4D. We can drag that into the composition button and it will create a new composition where we can uh, work with in the uh, uh, composition in the timeline at the bottom. Now another tab open for the intro composition and a tab for the wildlife, wildlife composition. So that's it for the timeline, I mean for the uh, project bin. Next we're going to go into the timeline. We're going to be talking about the different tabs that you can be uh, working with in After Effects. Now depending on how many compositions you have, the, the more tabs you have. And the timeline works as layers, so kind of like an onion. So let's say you have a lot of layers on your um, you know, project. So we have a couple of layers. We have the wildlife text layer. We have the black solid layer, and we have the wildlife video layer in the background. We have the wildlife one in the front, we have the black solid in the back, and we also have the wildlife as the core main focus. We can also lock layers so that you can't edit them and move them around. 
can hide layers by clicking the um, hide button or shy, I guess is what it's called. You can also solo different layers. So if you solo the layer, you can't really solo the camera and or light because they're kind of like objects. So you can just lock those so you can't move with them. But we can solo different layers and we can work with those by itself. But we like to keep everything together so we know what's going on at the moment. And I have a bunch of different effects on my timeline that I used um, to make the video stand out and really make it really cool. Now, if you select an effect, it'll pop up another tab right next to the project bin, as you can see here. And this is where you'll edit everything. You can move that around as well to whatever uh, you feel like. You can lock that. And you can use the little scroll to um, move things, move through different tabs as well. We're going to close the tabs thing, and we're going to close the tabs or the effects tab. Um, and we're going to lock these layers so we don't move with them later on. And as you can see, as we scroll through this, um, everything looks a little bit blurry if we uh, work with it. Like you can see the ducks and or whatever animal. I think they're ducks. I don't know. I'm not very good with very many wild animals. Um, but you can see a lot of different pixels that really doesn't look very um, good. Now we're going to talk about the composition window. Now the reason why everything looks so pixelated is because when we're working with After Effects, you want things to run really fast, right? So when you preview things, um, you want them to, um, you know, look nice. Or you want them to, to run fast. So you don't want to have it on such a high setting that the preview takes very long to render. So what we have is the resolution and or down sample factor pop up. And this is where we set everything to um, what we want. So if you want it set to full, if you have a very fast computer, you can have it running at full and your RAM should be okay. Um, if you set it to half, which is usually where I set it to, and or third, you can uh, use it with older computers and it should preview and s scroll through really easily. If you go to the preview tab right here, you can play through and if it's set to half or third, it should run a little bit faster. As you can see, if you set it to third or quarter, it, re it um, renders a little bit faster and it kind of gives you a little overview of what's going on. Up here, as you can see, it says info and audio tabs or audio panels. And this is where the frames per second is showed, the RGB colors if you um, move around. Uh, let's just pause the video real quick by pressing the play button and or space bar. Um, and that'll pause the video. And as you can see, if you uh, move around the cursor on the composition window, the RGB um, coordinates change as well as the X and Y of the cursor. And the color changes according to whatever color is in the video. So let's say it's on the horses, it'll change to red or brown and things like that. The next thing we're going to talk about is the effects and presets. Now this is a very handy little um, little panel that allows you to go through different effects. It's the exact same thing as going to the effect menu and selecting effects on here. As you can see, the 3D channel is the same as here. Audio, blur, sharpen channel, but it's just a little shortcut to finding things. So let's say we wanted to add a shadow to the black solid uh, layer on our um, timeline. So we're going to uncheck this and we're going to find shadow by clicking search and we're going to look for shadows. As you can see, the dimension bevel plus shadow is what we want to use, so we drag that into our um, composition and or timeline. We can drag it into here, but you have to have it dragged onto the exact uh, thing, so we usually like to drag it into the timeline. And it will create a little effects tab, and we have the bevel alpha plus drop shadow, which is the bevel plus shadow. And if we collect selected them, obviously we can edit them. And now you see um, a shadow at the bottom, a little overview of what you can do with that. And so that's what's really handy about the effects and presets. Effects are basically, you can edit them yourselves, and presets are already set to different uh, modes and things like that. So like if you use, the, um, use things like Sony Vegas and you have presets, you can click like eyeshadows and it'll automatically have a preset effect for that um, you know, preset, hence the name preset. Um, we're going to go into the, the characters. So like I said before, if you want to add the characters, you go to window, in the menu, you click character, and then the character um, panel will pop up. And basically, you can edit text with the character panel by selecting the text layer. We're going to solo it. We're going to lock it. And we're going to be using this real quick. And we can kind of change the uh, font of the text. If we so choose, we have to select it first. And, you know, change it to whatever you want. Change the size of the font. But we like it at uh, Trebuchet MS. And we can also change the color by either clicking the color box and or selecting the eyedropper tool. And we can find different colors that we want to work with. So we want this red. It'll change to the red. So that's basically a quick overview of uh, Adobe After Effects. And again, this can be applied to every Adobe After Effects um, release. Um, I'm sure they don't change it very much because of the fact that, um, you know, people are so used to and professionals are used to using this kind of workflow. And so let's just unsolo that. That's about it. 
So I hope, you enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and uh, in our next video, we're going to be talking about the project bin and really going into depth on what it is. And in this series, we're basically going to talk about the basic overview of every single panel that you can use and then talk about effects and things like that. So I hope you enjoy it, and uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.